Today, you're going to learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article together. Welcome back to JFIRS English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now, let's get started. First, I'll read the headline. How were the pyramids built? So our headline is actually a question. Questions are definitely something I see a lot of mistakes with. So notice the sentence structure, how, and then we have our verb to be conjugated in what? The past, the past plural, because it's being conjugated with pyramids, which is plural. How were the pyramids, this is the subject, how were the pyramids built? Now, let's say you wanted to take this question and you wanted to complete this sentence. I wonder, do you know how to complete the sentence? I wonder how the pyramids, this is the subject, and then we have our auxiliary verb and our main verb. I wonder how the pyramids were built. And notice it ends with a period because this is not a question. This is a statement, which is why we have the subject and then the verb. So what about you? Have you ever wondered how the pyramids were built? Let's review this question. What verb tense is it in? The present perfect. Have you ever wondered how the pyramids were built? And to answer this, you can say, yes, I have. Yes, I have wondered how the pyramids were built or no, I haven't. So here's the short form of the question. So put your answer in the comments. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Put that in the comments. And now let's continue and find out. One of history's most ancient and unsolved puzzles. Notice the pronunciation here. Ancient. Ch. Ancient. One of history's most ancient and unsolved puzzles is the construction of the pyramids. Again and again over the course of history. So here, again and again. This is very useful to have in your vocabulary. Again and again is a very natural way to say repeatedly. Native speakers use this a lot. For example, I asked her again and again to clean her room. So you can use this with a little frustration or annoyance. Or you can use this in a more positive way. I practice again and again for my IELTS. So a very natural expression. Again and again, over the course of history, many scholars and scientists asked and wondered the same question of how the pyramids were built. So notice here, this is written as a statement. They're stating what the question is, but they're not asking it as a question. And you know that because the subject comes first, how the pyramids were built. The Great Pyramids of Giza and the other pyramids, over 100 Egyptian pyramids, are considered the greatest pieces of human engineering and architecture. Notice the pronunciation. I hear a lot of mistakes with this. Even students who have this job title, I hear mistakes. Arca, architecture, architecture, architecture. The job title is architect and the field area of study is architecture. I'm an architect. I studied architecture. Now let's go back because I want you to notice here are considered the greatest pieces. If you used regarded, you would need regarded as, are regarded as the greatest pieces, but you don't need the preposition as with considered. So the structure is to be, here's our verb to be, to be considered something or to be regarded as something. Now let's continue. These monuments are still standing after over 4,500 years and are still a mystery unsolved to this day. To this day is a useful phrase. It means until now. We use it in more of a poetic sense or when we want to emphasize something specific. For example, to this day, I don't know why she quit. So let's say she quit five months ago. Five months ago, you could have said, I don't know why she quit. And from five months ago until now, to this day, I don't know why she quit. 
She had an amazing job. So this is why you don't understand her reason for quitting. Before we move on, I'd love to tell you about Pace AI, an English language learning platform that uses artificial intelligence to help you learn from real world content, such as news articles, like the one we're reviewing right now. Pace's AI helps you learn five times faster by giving you personalized practice and real-time feedback with speaking, vocabulary, grammar, and more, all tailored to your level and needs. The best part is that you can learn from topics that are interesting to you and relevant to the real world. You can choose an existing article from the categories such as business, science, or tech, or you can upload any article online simply by entering the link. And now my article's ready to review. Pays AI has an audio feature so you can hear the content read by a native speaker. This will help you improve both your listening skills and pronunciation at the same time. Plus, you can look up the definition of any word as you're reading so you're also expanding your vocabulary, you're learning correct sentence structure, and you're improving your reading comprehension. If your native language is Spanish, Japanese, or Mandarin, you can use the translation feature for additional support. You can even get personalized feedback on your pronunciation so you know what areas you need to improve. I love this feature. One of my favorite features is the personalized practice. There are engaging and effective exercises to improve your vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, and even spelling. These exercises will help you learn faster and also help you permanently remember everything you learn. And the AI tutor is always available to help you when you have questions or need more personalized support. The AI tutor is available in over 100 languages so you can get extra support in your native language when needed. I highly recommend Pace AI as an effective and fun way to become fluent in English. And Pace AI is giving all of you a free seven day trial if you join using my link. Once you've started your trial, you can join my personal class with the class code. So look in the description for the link to start your free seven day trial right now. Now let's continue with our lesson. So the pyramids are still a mystery unsolved to this day. It sounds more dramatic. Some scriptures found from ancient Egyptians can help us to understand a bit better how the construction of such monuments has come about. So notice here, come about to come about, but this is conjugated in the present perfect, has come about. This simply means happen. You could say to this day, so using this expression again, to this day, I don't know how the problem came about. I don't know how the problem happened or started. And in the past, you weren't sure how it came about. And still today, now, so from the past until now, you don't know how the problem came about, happened. Let's continue. These huge structures of limestone or mud brick are the oldest known man-made structures on our planet. Known in this sentence is important because without it, it sounds like a fact that the pyramids are the oldest man-made structures on our planet. But by including known, it's suggesting that Perhaps there are older man-made structures, but we don't know about them because we haven't discovered them. So it's adding some doubt to it. The oldest known man-made structures, you could also say the oldest man-made structures on our planet that we know of. It means the exact same thing. So you can just summarize that by putting known. The general theory is based on the belief that the huge stones were carved from the quarries using copper chisels. A chisel is simply a tool. 
Then these blocks, so the blocks being the huge stones that were carved, the blocks that were used to form the pyramids, then these blocks were dragged and lifted into position. Let's look at the verb to drag. When you drag something, you move it by pulling it on the ground rather than lifting it. So in this case, they weren't able to lift the stones because they were too heavy. So they had to drag them on the ground. But this is something that children commonly do with their items or adults do with items that are also too heavy to lift. But for kids, you hear parents say a lot, don't drag your school bag, it will get dirty. So the kid has their school bag and they're just dragging it behind them rather than lifting it up. However, this is very important, this transition word, however, because now we know there's going to be a contrasting point. So this is one theory. So now it sounds like there's going to be another theory because they used however, which is always used to introduce a contrasting point. Transition words are an easy way to instantly sound more fluent and advanced, so I highly recommend you use them. However, the method regarding the movement and placing of these stones is under great dispute. Our expression is to be under dispute and then great just modifies it to be under dispute. This means there isn't agreement. So some people believe this, other people believe this. There isn't agreement. The techniques that were used in the process of constructing the Egyptian pyramids have baffled many historians and scientists for countless years. Let's take a look at baffled. This is used to say that you don't understand or that you're confused. So take a look at this example. The fact that she quit her job baffles me. This baffles me. So the something is this entire clause here. The fact that she quit her job baffles me. Another way of saying this is I don't understand why she quit her job. But when you use baffle, it emphasizes your lack of understanding or that you find something very confusing. So it's a great way to emphasize this and it's very commonly used. So I suggest you add it to your speech. So the Egyptian pyramids have baffled many historians and scientists for countless years. When you don't want to specify a number, but you want it to sound like a big number, you can say countless. I've been learning English for countless years. It sounds like a big number, maybe 10, maybe 15, countless years. Here's another example using countless. I've asked her countless times to stop dragging her school bag. So again, it emphasizes many times. Remember, you could also use I've asked her again and again, which also sounds like many times. Many controversial hypotheses were introduced regarding the construction of the pyramids. Let's talk about controversial. If something is controversial, it means it causes disagreement or debate. So by saying that the pyramids were built this way, well, remember it's under dispute. So some people don't agree with that. So that theory is controversial. It causes other people to become upset because they don't agree with it. Many controversial hypotheses. Hypotheses. This is the plural of hypothesis. One hypothesis, two or more hypotheses. So notice the pronunciation changes at the end to identify the singular versus the plural. And a hypothesis is a theory as to the reason for something. So the hypothesis for how the pyramids were built. It's a theory. Many controversial hypotheses were introduced regarding the construction of the pyramids. The form of the workforce is also under debate. Before we saw to be under dispute, now we have to be under debate, which is the same thing. It's the fact that 
people don't agree. Some people say this is the reason. Other people say this is the reason and they don't agree with each other. But notice that sentence structure to be under is our preposition. And then before dispute and here debate. One theory suggests that the pyramids were constructed using slave labor. And another theory suggests they were built by tens of thousands of free skilled workers that worked for a salary. If they work for a salary, it means they're paid for their work. So they're not slaves because slaves were not paid. So these are two theories that are under dispute or under debate. Let's continue. What is certain is that the workforce was highly organized and managed to the highest level by following an organized and planned process that consisted of three phases. So here, notice what is certain is and then the statement. This is useful if you want to introduce a statement, but you want to suggest is 100% true, is not under debate, is not under dispute, it's accepted as the truth. Here's a sentence in an everyday context. What is certain is that I'm not going to buy her a new school bag. So you could say, I'm not going to buy her a new school bag. But when you add what is certain is that it emphasizes it. It makes it sound like a strong statement. Now you can also say it in a shorter way by saying, I'm certainly not going to buy her a new school bag. And that still emphasizes that point. So here is a longer form. So you can see the sentence structure and then you can also just add the adverb, certainly. I'm certainly not going to buy her a new school bag. And why? Because you asked her again and again not to drag her school bag, but she didn't listen. And the fact she didn't listen baffles you. So what is certain is that the workforce, the workforce, this is a useful term because it summarizes all the people working at a specific time or for a specific company. So you could talk about the workforce of a country, which means all the people available to work in the country or the workforce of a certain company as well. So you see this a lot in economic or business news. So in this case, the workforce represents the total number of people who built the pyramids. The workforce was highly organized. In this case, highly means very, very or extremely highly organized and managed to the highest level by following an organized and planned process that consisted of three phases. And that's the end of our article. So what I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. So let's do that now. How were the pyramids built? One of history's most ancient and unsolved puzzles is the construction of the pyramids. Again and again, over the course of history, many scholars and scientists asked and wondered the same question of how the pyramids were built. The Great Pyramids of Giza and the other pyramids, over 100 Egyptian pyramids, are considered the greatest pieces of human engineering and architecture. These monuments are still standing after over 4,500 years and are still a mystery unsolved to this day. Some scriptures found from ancient Egyptians can help us to understand a bit better how the construction of such monuments has come about. These huge structures of limestone or mud brick are the oldest known man-made structures on our planet. The general theory is based on the belief that the huge stones were carved from the quarries using copper chisels. Then these blocks were dragged and lifted into position. However, the method regarding the movement and placement of these stones is under great dispute. The techniques that were used in the process of constructing the Egyptian pyramids have baffled many historians and scientists for countless years. Many controversial hypotheses were introduced regarding the construction of the pyramids. The form of the workforce is also under debate. 
One theory suggests that the pyramids were constructed using slave labor, and another theory suggests they were built by tens of thousands of free skilled workers that worked for a salary. What is certain is that the workforce was highly organized and managed to the highest level by following an organized and planned process that consisted of three phases. So, did you like this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If you do, then put more, 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 put more, more, more in the comments. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And remember, Pace AI is giving you a free seven-day trial. I know you'll love using Pace AI, and it will help you become fluent fast. You can click right here to sign up now, or you can look in the description for the link.